whatever you like. Or I am always there. All right, well, welcome to our Emerging Leaders Workshop today. And we have Robert Britton with us, who is the head of our custodial services. He's also a business owner. He's traveled around the world. Um, he is a minister. I mean, he's doing a lot of things. Yeah, a lot of things. A lot of things. Remember them all. But um, Robert uh, is, a, is a friend of the Emerging Leaders Program. He's participated and led workshops in this program before. And um, yeah, he's just a great guy. And if you see him around campus, you know, now you know who he is. Right. And he loves talking to students and getting to know you guys. So, um, without further ado, Robert Britton. All right. Uh, All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. You know, it is my honor and my privilege to stand before you today and, and, and give you a few words of encouragement about the journey that you're on. Uh, your journey is not so dissimilar from my own. Um, being a lifelong student, I'm always looking for those opportunities to increase my wisdom and my knowledge about the world and to be an emerging leader in the world today you also have to be an active leader and that means that you have to be involved in your success it's not just going to happen by someone giving you success you have to earn it that means you have to put your hands to the plow and you have to be intentional about what you want to see as your particular outcome I've had several businesses over the course of my life, and not all of them have worked well, but I have never been afraid to try. There are going to be many things that you are not successful at, but it does not mean that you are a failure at that particular thing. Benjamin Franklin said this, I have not failed. I've only found hundreds of ways things don't work. And so your journey is a process, a journey of discovery you're going to discover what works for you and what doesn't work. You're going to discover who works well with you and who do not work well with you. Every person that is in your circle of influence is not meant to go on your journey with you. So you're going to have to be willing to make the judgment and the decision to leave some people behind because it only sets you up to go back and get them later because they may not be at the same place that you're at and they may not be ready for your success. And so there are going to be times when you have to draw a hard line as a leader. And the very first thing that you're going to be the leader of is yourself. You have to be a self-directed leader. I have a clothing boutique, a family clothing store that my wife and I own in Edgewood, 2,500 square foot building in a very high traffic area. It's big space that requires a big output of resources. You have to have courage to step into those types of things because they want you on a five-year lease. So if you, if you fail in your first year, you're still on the hook for the additional four years. And so going into business is a risky proposition. Do you have the tolerance to withstand the risk? So what risk are you willing to take? I'm going to who, who in the room has a job or have had a job? All right, you guys have had jobs. And those jobs have paid you a salary. But your efforts have been worth so much more to your employer. Do you think that you are paid what you are worth? Nine times out of ten, you weren't. And so as a business owner and as, a, as an emerging leader, you have to make determinations whether you're going to be a consumer or whether you're going to be a producer. Leaders are producers first, and they consume less. And so in that mindset, to be an active leader, you have to determine what role you're going to play in your success as a leader. And you're going to have to be willing to surround yourself with people who are more capable than yourself. And why do I say that? I say that because... You can't do it all by yourself. You have to be willing to surround yourself with people with skill sets different from your own. 
who have levels of ability greater than your own. Because while you may be the owner, while you may be the leader, you also have to be willing to be an effective follower. I learned that lesson the hard way. Because there was a time in my life where I only wanted to lead. And I had not yet learned how to follow. But the most effective leaders are also effective and good followers. Are you willing to become a follower? That means that you have to model your success after someone else who has already been successful. So you're going to follow a pattern. A pattern of behaviors that's going to dictate your success. And every person has a different definition of what success is. Every person. We all come from different parts of the world. What type, what countries are represented in this room? What country are you from? Hong Kong. Hong Kong. What about you, South Korea. South Korea. Where are you from? Israel. The Bronx. Okay, gotcha. Where are you from? China. 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 Vietnam. Vietnam. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Washington. Hey. Where are you from? Okay. All right. And so we see these different perspectives. Now, you all didn't grow up in the same household, even though you may be some from, from the same part of the world. And so you're going to have a different perspective. You're going to have different learning styles. But you may be willing to pull resources from one another to make and build something successful. But you're going to have to be willing to put something at risk in order to become successful. And you have to determine what it is that you're willing to risk. Sometimes you have to risk time with your family in order to be successful. One thing that you guys may have considered or may not have considered, that you've already made a significant risk. You've already taken a significant risk in your life by coming here from your homeland. And what did you risk by coming here? You risked coming to a place that you had never been before. You missed coming to a place where you were unfamiliar, where no one knew you, and you didn't know anyone else. But you took a risk. Because there was a greater outcome on the other end. And so now you're already developing the building blocks for what it takes to become a successful leader. Sometimes you have to leave home to find your success. And so you're first starting with academic success. And you have to be a leader in your classroom. You have to be a leader to get your homework done every day because it requires discipline. And you have to be a self-directed studier, a self-directed learner, so that you can pick up on the skills that are necessary for you to be successful in your academic journey. And that will set the platform or the stage for you to be successful in business. And so when you came to the United States to come to this school, in order to get an education, what is your end goal? My goal is to be a uh, successful civil engineer. Okay. To, uh, maybe some days to build up my own enterprise. All right. Or work in a branch like Tesla or uh, one of the Giga factory. Right. Yeah, to monitor the solar panels. Okay. All right. All right. So you can be involved in a whole lot of things and deal dealing with creativity, with energy, and with uh, with new techn emerging technologies. So what are you looking to do when you, uh, what, what was the purpose for you coming to get an education here? I want to be a successful engineer and I want to um, build robots. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great, great. What about you? Uh, I want to finish my, my, not finish. <laughs> I'm here to pursue my business, uh, business master degree. Okay. Mm -hmm. Master degree of business administration. Whoa, all right, all right. And what about you? Communication and politics. Communications and politics, you want to run your government, I hear you. What about you? Me? Yes? Uh, um, I don't really know what is the big goals of my education here, but as long as I can help as many people as I can. Ah, you have to have the heart of a helper, the hands of a helper. Shumai, what, 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 what are your goals? I want to be a graphic designer. All right, graphic designer. And what about you? I want to be a chemical engineer. Now, look at what you have going. One of the things that I will encourage you guys to do is to talk to one another about what it is that you want to accomplish in your lifetime. Because you never know where your journey will lead you. And you never know who's going to be in a position to help you get there. So the person sitting next to you in 10 years could be in a position to give you the opportunity that you need to realize your dreams. 
And so develop relationships that are going to be beneficial to you. Relationships are key in life and in business. But in order for you to become an act active in leadership, you have to know what leadership is and means to you. Because for me, leadership means being responsible for the outcomes that I want in my life. Leadership means that I have children that are coming up after me, and so what I'm, what I'm, I'm conscious about what they see when they look at me. I'm conscious about how they perceive me when they go out into the world. And so regardless of what other people may say about me, they have their own, prep, their own uh, idea of what that is because they have a relationship with me. When you hang out with people, when you spend time with them, they develop a relationship with you that says no matter what anyone else says, I know who you are. So someone gets to know your reputation by what you do and the quality of time you spend with them. To be active in your leadership requires you to be intentional about being successful. Be intentional about being successful. So that's going to require you to be the very best at whatever it is that you're doing. Because everything is a competition. Everything is competitive. Your grades are competitive. You don't want someone sitting next to you to outdo you in class. When you go to the gym and work out, you don't want someone to outdo you working out. You don't want somebody to have more than you, better than you. But it's okay for someone to have different than you. Because it is, it is through those differences that you recognize your true capabilities. Because you're going to have a skill set in engineering that he doesn't have. If you combine them together, you can create something powerful. Be willing to share your ideas because there's really nothing new under the sun. Everything that you want to create is already out there. You can improve upon it and make it different, make it better. But if there's nothing new under the sun, whether it is pulling things from the invisible into the visible, that means that you have the capability of bending time. And what does bending time mean from the prospect of leadership? That means that you can reach into your future and create it from the present tense. And how do you do that? You do that by preparing today. The preparations you're making right now, you're designing your future. So you are actually bending time. And so being a leader requires you to be creative and think differently than everybody else. You see, in business school, they're not going to teach you to bend time. In business school, they're not going to teach you about the revenue, the tax agent coming after you if you don't pay your taxes. I learned that the hard way, too. And I'll give you this example. I had a business once, and I was collecting the sales tax. But I, when I received my income through the, through the business, I was paying everybody but the tax man. And as a result of that, I got a phone call. Hey, you're in business. You're registered with the state. You know that it's a felony to withhold the tax revenue that you collect on behalf of the state? Oh, no, I didn't know that. They didn't teach me that in business school. And so there are things that you're going to learn on the job. Things that are going to put fear in you. The tax man coming after you can put fear in you. It'll make you not want to do business. But you have to have the fortitude and the desire to do that which is right even when it's hard, and even when it doesn't benefit you. That's called integrity in your business. Doing the right thing, even when it does not impact you in a positive way. You have to do the right thing. So your integrity is going to mean something to you. And most of you are from an Asian culture where honor is everything. Your family honor, the name that you come from, all of those things mean something. And in every culture, your name means something. Because your name says something about who you are and where you come from. It says something about who you're connected with. My wife is Cambodian. And so we've been together for 17 years. We have four kids. And she taught me a lot about honor in the Asian community and what that means. And how you cannot dishonor the family name. It means something to you 
to have the name that you have. It means something to you to have the opportunity to get your education here in the United States because there's honor associated with it. And now that honor is attached to you and that honor is attached to your father. That honor is now attached to your mother because now your parents get to brag to their friends, well, my daughter is in the United States getting an education. And their friends may not be able to have that capability. And so you become a bragging right for your parents because they're proud of you. They're proud of what you're becoming. And so they're going to sacrifice and make the best opportunities available so that you can go out and get the life that you want. And when you become a leader, that's also what you're going to have to do. Make sacrifices. Make sacrifices so that you can envision the type of success that you want. You see, I'm not a one-dimensional leader. There are so many facets to my life. I design workshops. I do pu public presentations. I'm a pastor. I'm a published author. I'm getting ready to, by the, in the first part of next year, I'll publish two books at the same time. But I'm publishing them with my own company. My reasoning is that, why would I write all of these books and send them to someone else to publish them and wait to get a royalty on my work when I can own the company and I don't have to pay anyone anything? Mindset, how you think. You must develop an entrepreneurial spirit as, a, as an emerging leader, as an active leader. And what does that mean? That means that you must take ownership of everything that, puts you, that you put your hands to. Because everything that you touch represents you. What is the reputation that you want to be known by? What is the legacy you're going to leave behind? Who's going to see you and remember your name? Those are questions that emerging leaders and active leaders ask about their lives. Because they are purposeful and intentional about who they hang out with. They're intentional about how much time they spend on TV. They're intentional about how much time they spend going to the movies. They're intentional about what they eat and how it affects their bodies. I went to a workshop uh, several weeks ago, and one of the things that was so impactful to me that it was um, the faculty and staff of Color Conference, and we had a men's section of, that, that was just for African American men or men of color. And one of the things that we talked about in this session was, what are you eating? And we learned that you must eat based on your blood type. Eat based on your blood type. Because there are certain foods that don't match your blood type. And therefore, because you eat those things, they won't kill you, but they will they'll kill you slowly. Even though they're healthy and they're good, they don't match your blood type. And so your blood type tells you what types of food you should be able to eat so that you can maintain optimal health. And so as an active leader, you have to be healthy in your mind, your body, and your spirit. They have to work together to get you to the level of success that you want. So find out what your blood type is and then do a Google search to see what types of foods what types of grains, what types of seeds, what types of fruits, what types of vegetables optimize this blood type? And when you eat based on your blood type, you will be healthier, you'll have more energy, and you'll, you'll, you'll think with more clarity. Right now, each one of us is probably utilizing less than, I don't know how many, how many who knows what the percentage of your brain power that you actually use? How much percent? Not even one percent. If you're not even using one percent of your brain power and you are as successful as you are right now, imagine if you got to one percent. Imagine if you use two percent. Imagine if you were able to change your diet to such a way that you are able to now think at that two percent capacity, that one percent capacity. Imagine what you will do. Imagine how you can lead. You can not only lead households, you can lead economies. Do you want to lead an economy? Don't you know you are an economy? We don't know what capabilities we have because we don't study ourselves to be successful. 
We don't study our own habits. We fail to study our own habits because no one has taught us to study how we, do, how we live. No one has told us to study how we and observe how we go through life. Everything you do says something about you. There are times, there were times in my life when I used to walk around slumped over. And what does that say about me? I'm walking around slumped over, what have you. And, but, there, but I came to an awareness of how I was walking. Someone approached me one day, why are you all bent over? I didn't even realize I was bent over. And so I began to purposefully be conscious of how I walked so that I could change my stature, change my posture. Therefore, it changed people's opinion about who I was. The other thing I did, because I wanted to become a speaker and be a, a, an activist, I began to change the way that I speak. And I began to purposefully enunciate the ends of my words. And I began to purposefully practice so that I could become successful at it. In order for you to be an active leader in your life, you have to know what it is you want to accomplish. And you study that, by, you learn that by studying yourself. What are your gifts, your talents, and your abilities? You know, I practice a faith that says your gifts will make room for you and place you before kings and queens. And what that means to me is that while I'm a man who's good at many things, I'm gifted at a few. And so if I learn to do what I'm gifted at, I can stop doing what I'm good at. Find your gift. Find those things that you're gifted at. You get tired of things, doing things you're good at, but you'll never get tired of things you're gifted at because your, your capacity to do it will expand as you grow. And so learn to find your gift. If you're going to be a gifted business owner, if you're going to be a gifted leader, Know that that's your calling. Know that that's the thing that you should do to have the level of success that you want. And your level of success may not be the same as mine. We're going to have different standards, but once you reach yours, you can claim your success. The other thing that I want you to understand about success that it requires, your success requires requires a celebration. Your success requires a celebration. And what do I mean by that? That means that once you set a set of goals for yourself, you set what we call milestones. And when you reach a certain milestone, you celebrate. And celebrating now becomes an active part of your life. Because everybody loves a celebration. And it can be something small. You can say, when I reach this, this juncture, I'm going to treat myself to a nice dinner. And you know that every time you reach a milestone, you're going to dinner. And so because it's something you enjoy, and you're going to get that nice porterhouse steak that's 32 ounces that covers the whole plate with your potatoes and your vegetables and everything on the side plus dessert, you know that that brings you joy and satisfaction. Create something in your life that you enjoy, that you can celebrate when you reach a milestone. So that celebrating your success becomes a habit for you. And when you develop habits, that is something you carry no matter where you go. And so whenever you have a successful thing in your life, you celebrate it. And then you learn to celebrate your friend's accomplishments. And you celebrate your friend's accomplishments without, celebrate your friend's accomplishments without without jealousy. Celebrate your friend's accomplishments without jealousy, desiring what they want. You know, they put forth a certain port of a certain uh, aspect of uh, energy into their success. And they're able to become successful because they applied certain principles to their work. When you apply those principles to your work, 
you too can become successful because you've learned how to celebrate and you're celebrating without being jealous of others. You know it takes energy. You know jealousy is a negative emotion. And so you cannot benefit from the jealousy that you have because someone else is successful. All that tells me is I need to work a little bit harder. I need to spend a little bit more time with my friend who is successful. Hey, how did you do it? What are the things you're doing? How much time are you spending on these activities? And so when you begin to make, now it comes time for you to make, when you find yourself not here, and not, but in this place, this is what you need to start doing now. Adjust. You need to adjust some of your behaviors so that you can be on the right track. Adjusting basically means that you've observed what you are doing and that you need to make an adjustment so that it can go in the right trajectory. Make adjustments. Little incremental adjustments can make the biggest difference in your success. You see, so often we are taught that we need to make big, wide, sweeping changes in our lives. We don't. Small, incremental changes can give you the greatest results. Say that, say that, say that loudly. Tiny tweak for a little bit change. That's right. Tweak it just for a little bit so you can get the change you want. Tweak it. Make small, incremental adjustments. Because when you make big adjustments, you do what they call over-adjust, overcompensate. So make little small adjustments as you go so that you can get the result that you want. And then you measure. When you get in business, they tell you that if you can't measure it, it can't happen. How are you going to measure your success? What are you going to look at? What are going to be the barometers that you're going to utilize so that you can recognize when you've arrived at a level of success? What does success look like to you? How would you describe success? Well, I would say I'm approaching the person I want to be every day, step by step. Step by step. Taking a step by step approach to what you want. And that, for her, it requires looking at someone who's already successful at what she wants to do and be. And the closer she gets to them, the more she knows she's closer to her success. What does success mean to you? Yes. Yes. Um, it's like uh, success for me when it's like you see somebody you be able to help with, and then they'll feel happy, and they satisfy with what the answer that you give. Yes, yes, yes. And what you just said sparked something in my spirit about you because it speaks to what you said that you want to help. Success to her is helping others. So every time she has the opportunity to help somebody, she's going to get a feeling of gratification. She can celebrate that and not be jealous because someone else is successful. Because now she's being successful because she's been in a position to help. What does success mean to you? Uh, it's very complicated if you ask me. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, I think that success uh, is not defined by the individual, but defined as far as what you are called to be. If you are told to be something or if you are designed to be something, mm -hmm. then fulfilling that is success. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily setting the goals for yourself, because you have to ask yourself, why do I value these things? Why do I intrinsically value helping others? Right. Why is that valuable to me? Why do I value, you know, uh, not being jealous of others? Right. Why do I value being successful and choosing to lead in all these situations? You have to ask yourself, why do I want to lead? Right. Uh, in the first place, before you, you know, you have to ask, well, what do you value? Right. Uh, so for me, maybe it's not really answered yet. Mm -hmm. I think I have a lot more questions than answers. So what you're on is a journey of. A journey of discovery. And so you learn as you go. And as you pick up, as you pick up these, these tools along the way, you begin to build your treasure chest. And so everything you collect along the, your life's journey gives you the opportunity to now say that once I receive my success, 
I can celebrate it, but I'm discovering it as I go. So once you've discovered something new, celebrate the discovery. I didn't know that before, but I know that now. What about you? What is success to you? Uh, generally, by the success of those I lead, mm -hmm. uh, those I give direction and guidelines to, mm -hmm. and of course by the, the personal growth of myself, okay. by experiencing uh, the success, the collective success. Right. Mm -hmm. When other people can, be, can do their jobs right because of the instructions that he's given, if he's in a position to lead others, he wants to lead them so that they can be successful. And as long as they're successful, he considers himself successful because he's done his job. He's done his job. What is success to you? Success to me is actually um, it's similar to uh, discovery mm -hmm. and because I think uh, success to me is still uh, it's on a lifelong journey. Yes. But getting the admiration and the uh, uh, acceptance from people from to what I as, uh, have established right. in my studies and mm -hmm. in my uh, region of mm -hmm. uh, being in the criteria of, of uh, career. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you find your career, because so often career choices are like job choices. We hop from place to place throughout our journey. Sometimes we know instant. We know from an early age. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a doctor. I want to be this. My daughter, who's 15, she tells me that she told me from the time she was like six that she wanted to be a doctor. She wanted to be a pediatric surgeon. She knew at that age that's what she wanted to be. And so we said to her, "Okay, you're going to have to be good in math, science, and this and that and the other." She's never wavered. She's a straight A student. She plays competitive sports. She travels all over the country playing volleyball. She's active. So she carves out the time necessary. She makes the sacrifices necessary so that she can reach her goal. So she has, I've discovered at a young age what I want to do. And she has not wavered from that. And so when, you, when it becomes ingrained in you, it becomes part of your being, what you want to do and the direction you want to go. Because so many people want to tell you what you should become before you've even had an opportunity to discover it yourself. As parents, I want you to be a doctor. As a parent, I want you to be a teacher. You know, one of my friends is Korean, and she was talking to me about, in her family, her father would not, her father didn't accept her as readily as he did her brother. Because he said, well, you should be a teacher while your brother should be a doctor, your brother should be an engineer. She said, no, Papa, I need to be a doctor. I need to be a doctor, and that's what I'm going to do. And so she had to break down some norms, because sometimes cultural norms have to be broken in order for you to find